email address. And, and someone asked very early on, but yes, um, we made the previous record, uh, sorry, the previous slide deck available as well. And so you will be looking to do the same for this time around. Thank you. Amazing to see everyone in the chat. So I, I see Devor has asked um, where folks can access the slides from the previous webinar. So maybe when we send out the slides for this time around, we can just, you know, send both. Um, you know, as we have these webinars, we can just kind of link each of the previous uh, slide decks as well. So we'll follow up with that. Oh, Gina, it, um, it's off of the presentation and now on a separate desktop, I believe. We'll get started once you're able to put that back up. Perfect. All right. Yeah, you can you, you can you can keep it on that slide. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Um, last week we held our intro webinar about the Digital Inclusion Fund opportunity, and we're really excited to spend a bit more time this week taking a deep dive on today's coalition building grant opportunity and. Looking forward to also Friday's innovation grant opportunity deep dive um, as a part of the digital inclusion fund. And so um, today we'll be looking to spend a lot more less less time on background um, and a lot more time on the content of uh, the application process and um, what the experience will look like. So next slide, please. Uh, taking a look at the agenda. Uh, we're going to describe the organizations involved in developing this opportunity, namely Schmidt Futures and NDIA, where the idea came from, why it's critical for New Yorkers everywhere, and then we'll jump right into a detailed explanation of the coalition planning grants and what folks can expect during the application process, as mentioned before. Uh, before, you know, just giving a, a good amount of time to questions at the end, I think that was really helpful last time, and we'd love to focus on that as well. Next slide, please. So a bit of background on myself. My name is Nuha Saho. I work as an I work as an analyst at Schmidt Futures and have worked over the past year to develop this initiative in partnership with the team at the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. Uh, I'm a native New Yorker who's been all over the state, but I was born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, Schmidt Futures is um, uh, best described, I think, as a venture facility for public benefit. 
what that means is that we combine the best parts of a traditional philanthropy, so investing in grant making, but also other type of investment vehicles, as well as bringing a venture capital lens to this. So how do we kind of catalyze new um, ecosystems and infrastructure with the investments that we make? It's a philanthropic initiative started by Eric and Wendy Schmidt. Um, that tries its best to apply uh, leverage or, 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 or kind of de-risk investments that the government or other folks might traditionally make in order to um, demonstrate how initiatives can run. And so the reason why Schmidt Futures is running or, or leading this initiative um, comes directly from our experience on the Reimagine New York Commission this past year. And so uh, right after COVID hit, uh, starting in May of 2020, uh, Governor, uh, former Governor Cuomo's team put together a task force um, of different leaders from business, healthcare, the arts, um, technology to kind of think through how to build back better after COVID in New York State. And um, our team spent a lot of time thinking through connectivity challenges. So we worked with the state uh, government to write policy memos advocating for uh, connectivity and digital inclusion. We help support K through 12 schools by bringing connectivity um, to their homes through hotspot programs and uh, also invested in initiatives, um, local uh, network pilot initiatives um, in Buffalo, Yonkers, Brooklyn, and other places in New York State as well. And so I see some of those folks on the call. So as the commission began to wrap up this past March, I would say, uh, Schmidt Futures really wanted to create a model for supporting digital inclusion in New York State that could, uh, that the state could follow up on um, and, and potentially create, uh, sustain this infrastructure going forward. And so um, that is pretty much where the idea, the inception came from. And I'm really excited to spend less time on that and a little bit more time deep diving on the opportunity. So I'll pass it off to my colleagues at NDIA um, to explain as well. Okay, thank you, Nuha. Thank you all for being here. My name is Gina Cooper Benjamin. I'm the deputy director at NDIA. At NDIA, we're leaning into this very important um, digital equity moment. So we're here to, we're excited to be a part of this initiative. NDIA, um, we describe ourselves as a unified voice for home broadband access, personal devices, and local technology training and tech support. We are a community of digital inclusion practitioners and advocates. We provide spaces and opportunities for practitioners to meet and discuss what's happening in their local communities. Some of these opportunities include our annual net inclusion conference, we have community calls, we have working groups, and we have a very robust listserv. We take what we learn and we use what, and we use that to advocate for our community. Um, essentially, we are a bridge between policymakers and the general public. We represent over 600 affiliated organizations in 44 states, Washington, DC, and the US Virgin Islands. Our affiliates are nonprofit organizations, municipal, municipal governments, local libraries, regional library councils, colleges and universities, state government agencies, um, housing authorities, we, it's a whole long list. Our positions are based on the work that our affiliates do on the ground every day. At NDIA, we're doing a lot of work on the state, at the state and local levels to uplift digital inclusion activity and work. We have a trailblazers program. We call this a trailblazers. It's a, it is a list of local initiatives. We call it an honor roll. There are six, six indicators that we use to determine trailblazers uh, in the New York State. In New York State, New York City is one of our, is on our trailblazers list. At the state level, we have the digital equity scorecard in it, which assesses state efforts based on six criteria. You can go to that uh, webpage and see what those criteria are and how each state ranks. We have an affiliate map where you can look for others doing the work in your state or region and connect to them. Finally, I wanna put in a plug for Digital Inclusion Week that's coming up. I want you all to save the date. It's October 4th through 8th. Digital Inclusion Week is an annual campaign that recognizes local digital inclusion organizations and special events that promote digital equity across the country. For those of you new to the work, uh, we also have a startup manual on our website, so you could check that out too. I'm going to share, I'm going to set, set um, talk about digital equity and digital inclusion to kind of ground us in our conversation today. 
when we say, when we uh, talk about digital equity, we use this de definition. Individuals and communities have the capacity for full participation in society, democracy, and the economy. And for us, that's a goal. Um, Digital equity is necessary for civic participation, uh, civic and cultural participation, employment, lifelong learning, access to essential services like healthcare, education, and even banking. When we talk about digital inclusion, we're talking about the activities for necessary for full participation. And these activities are affordable home broadband, digital appropriate devices, digital literacy, and tech support. Um, when we talk about affordable home broadband, you know, we're really, it's really important to uh, discuss um, income is, uh, income as a kind of barrier to uh, broadband adoption. In the state of New York, we have some numbers from the American Community Survey, which say that if you are earning 75K or more, 4.5% um, of households do not have broadband, broadband subscription. If you earn between 20 and 75, uh, 75K, 16.8% of households do not have a broadband subscription. But if you earn less than 20K, that number almost doubles to 36.2% of households that do not have a broadband, broadband subscription. So there's a link there between income, a correlation there between income and who has broadband, a broad, uh, reliable um, broadband subscription. When we talk about appropriate devices, um, we're not just talking about mobile phones. Yes, mobile phones will serve a purpose, but we really want people to have access to uh, the, perf the solutions that are the right fit for what they need to do to participate online. When we talk about digital literacy, we're talking about the skills you need to do those things and to use the internet. Um, and then when we talk about the tech support, we usually point people towards digital navigators. So these are individuals um, who address the entire digital inclusion process. That's home connectivity, devices, and digital skills. These are trusted members of our community um, um, who are able to assess, assess, assess issues and then point um, community members to solutions. So I wanted to ground us a little bit in that. Newha and Christy are gonna provide an overview of the digital inclusion planning grants and share how these digital inclusion activities may show up in this grant opportunity. So Christy. Oh, um, Gina, I'm going to I'm going to take this next slide, but um, th this this right here is just to give a bit of a background on the problems that we saw in the digital inclusion space and and why we kind of arrived at, at this as a solution. So the digital inclusion fund was developed because uh, of our team's research on the state of digital equity and digital inclusion resources, as Gina mentioned, in New York State. And through that research um, with stakeholders, um, such as a lot of the folks on this call, we found that organizations working on digital inclusion in New York State often operate in silos without much structured opportunity to combine resources for a collective impact model. And so while organizations are similarly based, uh, sorry, are based in similar geographies, they're not often um, incentivized to come together to support the communities that they do um, in partnership. And so um, we think that digital inclusion is better understood as a systems level problem where this spans lack of access to affordable broadband, to digital literacy and tech support in underserved communities. Um, and most organizations tackling the digital divide only address one element of this problem due to a lot of other structural problems, namely funding. Um, and the digital inclusion ecosystem, you know, lacks a traditional uh, collective impact model that encourages the formation of these diverse stakeholder groups. So I think that that's really the main purpose and what we're here to do with this opportunity. The purpose of the Digital Inclusion Fund will be to support a set of initiatives that increase the scale as well as the impact of existing and new digital inclusion work uh, ser serving vulnerable populations that we'll outline later in this presentation. So th this fund is also um, just to note, it's, it's one of the first of its kind in New York State and really has the potential to scale um, through partnerships with state agencies and other stakeholders in the future. And so we really see this as laying a foundation for something even bigger to come um, eventually. And so in particular, the coalition planning grant opportunity that we're just discussing today is meant to catalyze the development of um, the development or the expansion of um, digital inclusion coalitions across New York State. 
And these grants will be given to organizations who have demonstrated through our application process that they have the ability to bring in local stakeholders in their communities in order to one, define local digital inclusion community needs, uh, two, develop plans to address these issues, and three, to take advantage of the influx of federal funding that we know is coming through various state channels um, to support digital inclusion work. And so the ultimate goal, um, just plainly, is to, uh, you know, is, is for this funding to support coalition planning to create statewide partnerships that would enable a new kind of digital inclusion e infrastructure in New York State uh, centered around coalitions. Thank you, Nuha. So I'm Christy Zaffi Ferradino, Program Director at NDIA, and I'm really excited to be able to meet with you today I'm a Western New Yorker, so I see lots of Western New York people on the call. So as Nuha and Gina said, we're really excited to partner with Schmidt Futures to provide support and guidance to bring this New York Digital Inclusion Fund to you, and give you the resources that you need to continue to do the work that you're doing and expand the work that you wanna do. So what I wanna talk about is the eligibility criteria, the expectations of grantees, what would make a successful grant application, the grant award period and the range of grant awards. That's what I'm gonna talk about for the next couple of minutes. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is who can apply for this grant. It can be any organization working in New York State on digital inclusion. However, if there's an organization who wants to work on digital inclusion and they are not yet, they can still apply for this grant. And those could be community-based organizations, anyone ranging from a nonprofit to digital inclusion advocates, people who do workforce development around digital skills training, internet service providers, or other community anchor institutions. So again, it could be people who are already part of an existing coalition or people who are interested in doing that work and wanna get funding to have the infrastructure to start to, start to plan for coalition planning. So what we really wanna see these coalitions serve is priority populations. And these would include immigrants and refugees or English language learners, formerly or currently incarcerated individuals, housing insecure or homeless people, low income households, people with disabilities, job seekers or older adults. So it's really focusing on all of those populations or a couple of those populations or one of those populations, whatever you believe your community most needs. So the next one that I want to talk through is the one that I think you're very interested. In. Actually, I have two slides that you're very interested in. But this next one is I just want to reiterate the purpose of the coalition grants. So the goal really is to have more coalitions of diverse partners, local engagement partners and stakeholders to come together and seek to identify what the challenges are with digital inclusion in your community and start to identify solutions to move forward. We're really looking to have a collective impact model here where we have more and more people coming together to support this work. So we want innovative partnership collaboration. So maybe there's an opportunity for you, for example, to partner with a SUNY and a Head Start and a hospital and a Chamber of Commerce. So what are ways that you can work together to really broaden the reach of that coalition? We really want you to be able to research and define your community needs around digital inclusion and then design plans of what those solutions would be. In this grant, you're not being asked to incorporate or implement those solutions. You're being asked to identify what it would be because again, it's a six month planning grant. So the general goal again, we wanna expand the number of partnerships in the state Ideally, our target is to support one digital inclusion coalition in every state, excuse me, in every economic development region within the state, and there are 10. We really want you to build relationships with local and state stakeholders. And also what I really wanna underline is we want you to use this time to also think about sustainability for the coalition you are either expanding or developing. We want you to think about what is that long-term funding that you could try to get to secure the coalition as an entity in your community. The work that Schmidt Futures, the investment that they are giving you are making available is 
one time only for the strategic planning. So we really want you to think about as you meet, as you think about this application, if you were a grantee, what would you do to ensure that you have sustainability for that collective entity that you've established in your community? So I'll take the next slide. Okay, so we are thinking that we will be awarding approximately 10 grants for this grant period. It's a six month grant period. Grant range is up to $30,000. Again, just for the six months and it's just around planning. The expectations for the grantees are that you attend the online meetings that we will have. We'll of course have a kickoff meeting, a um, interim meeting, a final meeting within that six month window. We will also make ourselves available to do grantee check-in meetings. We'd want your full engagement and participation in that. There will also be a series of training and technical assistance available to the grantee cohort, both as a group of the 10 or so grantees, and then there will be one-on-one -on -one time made available to you through NDIA's training and technical assistance work. And then there will be a final report that will be required for you to go through and identify how you achieve the goals that you have outlined in your application. So the next slide, I wanna talk about what we're looking for in these applications. And again, this application will post in the middle of September. And you'll have about four weeks to go through that application and refine it. But we want to make it as easy as possible for you in this grant. Um, the one thing I also want to mention is all the applications are going to be reviewed by an independent panel of judges with criteria that will be made available to you on the application webpage so you see what we're going to be looking for. Then we will provide Schmidt Futures with a list of all the applications and their scores based on the criteria um, for review. And then all grantees will be notified by the middle of December if their application has been identified for funding. So to make it easier, we are looking for a three to four page narrative which includes the following. The list of partners that you want to engage. We're looking for a diversification of the community partners you're bringing to the table. We're also looking for a description of how you want to build your coalition, what you're looking to achieve. And if you already do have a coalition that's established in your community, how would you expand those efforts to further advance digital inclusion in your community? We would like to know what outcomes and metrics you're looking to meet and or exceed. And then what are the barriers that currently exist in your community that you would like to address um, so that we can, again, look and see how we can get the most impact for the investment that Schmidt Futures is putting forward. And then again, the long-term sustainability is really important. This $30,000 grant is a seed of an investment in your community for digital inclusion. We'd like to make sure that once the grant period ends, the coalition moves forward and that we're really seeding the foundation of this work in your community. And then we're looking also for a, a high level budget and overview. Yes, I'm gonna get to the letters of intent. Um, so that's kind of the, the general information of the application. Again, that will be posted to the NDIA project page um, in the next couple of weeks or so. So let me go through the letter of intent that we had mentioned when we met last week. So again, the focus really is to bring as many people to the table as we can. So we're going to be asking for a letter of intent for the Digital Inclusion Coalition Planning application. And it's also as brief as we could make it because we want to know, say we have somebody in Binghamton and somebody in Plattsburgh, is there, well, that would be far apart, but say we had people um, in areas closer together, um, we want to, kind of do some matchmaking so that we could have you go in together to submit a joint application for this for the coalition planning. The letter of intent will be posted to our webpage um, on August 31st, so that's next Tuesday. And you'll have a week to submit those letters of intent to us. Um, that will give us a chance to go through them and figure out who best we should put together and make introductions to. We had also asked you today in the chat to introduce yourself um, with your organization and where you are and your email address. So I encourage you to kind of go through that as well, because this is an opportunity for you to also maybe partner with, a, um, with another organization 
or another person for your letter of intent. Um, and again, the applications will post um, for you to review and complete in the middle of September, and you'll have a month to do that. But again, we do want to make it as, as um, easy a lift as possible for you for this first um, grant. But do you know for the next grant that we're talking about on Friday, innovation grants, that application will be more comprehensive and a much more robust um, grant application. So that's the general that I wanted to walk through with you on the application. I'm going to flip it over to one of my colleagues who's going to continue this. And then we want to open this up to more questions for you. And I also did want to say, as you're thinking about your questions of what we may have missed, we got some great questions last week that we added to an FAQ. So that will be posted to our website as well by August 31st. So I'm going to flip it over to my colleague, um, Gina, to talk about the timeline and next steps. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Christy. That's great. Um, so you have a lot of information now. I just want to go over some of the timeline and next steps with you. Um, so we have these two webinars planned for today. This one is going over the, uh, the cult strategic planning coalition um, coalition building opportunity, those grants. And on Friday, we have another webinar coming up. It's about the innovation. Um, it's the innovation grants. And so the webinar on Friday is at 2 p.m. So please join us for that one as well. Also, the a letter of intent forms, as Christy pointed out, we're going to make it available next week. Um, and then you'll have, I think, about a week um, to, to complete it and get it back to us before September 8th. We're opening up the application. So the letter of intent process is different from the application process or the proposal process. So we're opening and opening up those applications or that proposal process um, starting mid-September. Um, we're gonna give you about four weeks or a month and then the application deadline is gonna be mid-October. We'll be announcing the awards for the grant in late like December and then work will get started in early January. Um, so you have a few weeks to kind of think through, think about the other, who you want to partner with in your communities um, and preparing to submit a letter of intent um, next week. So we also, so we want to open it up now to some questions. I saw, I see a lot of questions in the chat. We want to make sure we address all of those questions give you an opportunity to get some answers. I also want to um, guide you. I'm going to pop a link in the chat. I said I wasn't going to do this, this webinar, because I had a difficult time with it last week. But I'm going to pop a link in the chat for everyone. Please register for Friday's webinar for the innovation grants. Um, and we'll, and just as we did today, we'll go through, we'll go through the innovation grant details in more detail. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat for us now and we'll try to answer them all. We also have a, um, we also have a, an email address that we've set up. I think Christy popped that in the chat already, but if not, I'll pop it in there for you. So you can ask questions now, you can, um, and we'll, we'll all try to answer them, New Hall, Christy and I. And then, um, one more link in. Here's the address you can uh, the email address you can submit questions to as well. We do have one question, and this is a good one. Can a local foundation apply for funding, or should it be a community nonprofit organization? And then there's a second part. So let's answer the first part. Can a local foundation apply for funding? So um, kind of kind of as I mentioned in the chat, um, we're really looking for a public charity to, because um, Schmidt Futures will be doing the final grant approval. And from our perspective um, and the way our organization is set up, it'll just be a lot easier if it's a 501c3 or any other identified public charity. So the answer is yes, a local foundation can apply. Um, I'm curious to see what the model looks like there, if, if the local foundation is interested in dispersing the funding further or what they're planning to do with that. But the short answer is yes. Great. And then the second part of that question is, is it encouraged for multiple organizations to apply together or is it best to have one lead organization was working with the others? The answer is we would like one lead organization as the point of contact. It would be the one for which the grant funds would be provided um, so we would have one main contact. Again, we want you to bring as many people to the table as possible. And in the application, we're going to be asking you 
who is coming to the table, who would you like to have at the table? So we want that information of who those partners are going to be or could be, but we need one lead person. Um, a follow-up to that, Christy, above, there's a question from Lawrence Lombard. Sorry if I'm getting your last name wrong. Is the grant meant to be shared between the coalition partners or goes only to the applying org? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. Gina, if you have something to uh, mention early, I, I could hop in after as well. No, I think, you know, can you take this question? Definitely. So um, for, for the strategic planning grants in particular, sorry, for, yeah, for the strategic planning grants in particular, um, the grant is um, pretty flexible. Um, we, we kind of imagine this as one organization that's acting as the lead, you know, um, either using the funds to pay for staff time for one or a few individuals during that six month period to do outreach to those other organizations and be the kind of liaison. Um, but another model could easily be that the funds are split between a couple of organizations. Again, it's up to $30,000. So it's not the most money in the world if you're trying to split it between 10 organizations in your coalition to um, maintain focus but if if it, it could definitely go towards supporting uh you know one or two maybe full-time staff members really working on this during that period thank you Nuha. um oh chrissy there's a another good question in here from nate hill and before we kind of move on really quickly, sorry, I just want to say when it comes to the innovation grants that we'll deep, do a deeper dive on, in on Friday, um, those are actually met more, more so meant to be split between organizations because those collaborations will ideally be smaller, um, potentially between two to five organizations. But um, these right here are supposed to, um, you know, kind of uh, catalyze the development of these larger groups or larger collaborations. This isn't a question, but I want to uplift something that Nate Hill wrote in. He said he's a New York, he's from a New York based organization, or it's for New York based organizations. Um, he's talking about, um, he's working with on an opera funded digital equity project with the public library systems in New York City, which we talked about um, with them. And, and he said he'd love to collaborate with many of you on coalition building. So please email, email Nate. I will pop, I will repost his, um, his comments so that. So that's from Nate, in case anyone is interested in that. And I see a question from uh, Roberta Sullivan about if the rubric um, that will be used to review submissions can be shared. And Christy, I'm sure you have <laughs> more details here, but um, basically when you, when, when you see the application, it will have kind of a, a detailed instructions on what we're looking for. That is correct. We'll have what the scoring is for each section within the application so you can see what areas are higher or lower or just need to be filled out. So we want to set you up for success as much as we can. Did we miss any questions um, from participants? Gina, there was one about the webinar last week. We didn't post the recording, but we did send an email to everybody who had attended. Yes, so last week we didn't, uh, so yes, I did send out an email to, um, to uh, uh, a list of New York based um, um, contacts last week. If you didn't get that email, you can email the New York NYDI fund at digitalinclusion.org and request um, a copy of that email. It included registrations for this week. It included the chat from last week, which we found to be helpful. It had some questions and some answers in there. And then we included the slide deck from last week. So if you didn't get that email, please just um, reach out via email and we will make sure you get it. Oh, thank you, Christy. We wanna make sure we answer as many questions as possible. So please don't be shy. Um, there. Make sure we didn't miss any questions. 
And so, so that was for last week. So I see Devorah's um, comment about po posting the recordings. Devorah, we will um, post this week's recordings to the site and we'll, and, um, we'll also send it out via email. Sure, we'll have more information too on the budget items that are acceptable, but in general, it would be any office expenses um, in terms of printing materials, or if you did have an in -per a few in-person meetings and had refreshments or had to rent a space, um, things like that. Uh, office or um, staff time to um, manage the work of that coalition for the planning period, things like that. There are two good questions, one from Neil and um, Nuha, could you take one from Neil? Could we create a Google Doc where interested folks could share info about themselves? I think oh, definitely, yeah. this, this is from Nell. So um, essentially with the, with the process that we're having for the letters of intent, the reason why, just as a bit of a background that we, we created that small window where folks can submit a letter of intent is that we found that oftentimes when organizations um, in this space apply for grant opportunities, they don't exactly know who else they can partner with or who else is available for partnership. And so we really wanted an easy way for folks to be able to identify others in their local regions that are also interested in applying. And so what we're gonna do with the letter of intent process is that once you kind of submit, it's gonna be like a five, question, uh, sorry, yeah, a, a five question survey, essentially where you indicate um, information about your organization, you accept that we're gonna share this contact information with folks. And what we'll do afterwards is essentially for every, for all the folks that were identified which region they're located in in New York State, we're gonna share a list of others, um, you know, names, emails, and names of organizations to all of those folks so that you can kind of reach out amongst yourselves. So um, in essence, it kind of will be like a Google Doc where you'll be able to just reach out to different folks that you find interesting. I hope that answers the question. And um, I think- You didn't want us to share, I think we had talked about sending and letting us know somehow that, hey, don't share my contact information, but the, since we're focused on partnering, it would, you should definitely um, send to that. Exactly, yeah, the default there would be that if you're submitting a letter of intent, you're um, excited to share your contact information um, for folks to reach out if you're interested or not. Um, I see one more question here, which is, is there a limit to the number of organizations that can participate in a coalition? This is a great question. Um, I'm sure the NDIA folks know this a lot better than I do about you know, how large coalitions can get. The short answer is probably no, there's not a limit on the amount of organizations. Um, but, but that doesn't mean that you have to have 100 organizations you apply for this opportunity with, right? We're, we're, we're trying to use this money to support your growth. And so if you only apply with a handful of organizations, but illustrate your plans to expand and how you can bring in other local stakeholders, that, that totally makes sense as well. Does, does that answer, do you, um, is there anything else to add Gina and Christy before I hop to the next question? I don't have anything to um, add to that. I was just looking at R Robin's question or R Roberta's question next. Gotcha. Yeah, I think this is a really good question. Um, why does region matter? And so just as a, a brief history again of why we came to center this around New York State economic development regions is that when we first started and we were thinking about, okay, how do you um, incentivize these coalitions across New York state, we thought maybe of starting with county at the county level, maybe every New York state county needed a coalition. But, you know, after a, a bit of research, we found that there are way too many counties to, uh, <laughs> to make that sustainable. And so we found um, a really useful grouping in this uh, economic development regions. And we think that for the purposes of a local coalition, there, there are really good lines around where those regions are. But for our innovation grants, for example, where we're just incentivizing these other types of partnerships, smaller partnership collaboratives, that doesn't have a range on what region in New York State you're in. You could be in uh, Brooklyn and partner with someone in Buffalo. Like it, 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 it really doesn't matter in that case, be, as long as you can deliver the services um, that you're looking to deliver. But that's a different type of grant. For coalition building, we think that geography is actually very important in terms of identifying what matters to you and your local community members. And think that it, it, it just would dilute um, your local efforts by including folks 
other voices from other parts of the state that just don't share the same history or community that you do. Thank you, Nuha. We have two more questions. So Nate's question is easy. What other states are you working in? Um, this is a, a fund for New York state organizations and communities. Um, and so, yes, it's New York state. Yeah. Exactly. So, so currently, no other states that we know of have um, a model exactly like this um, with uh, looking to invest this much. And so, oh, you are there similar states? <laughs> oh, well, the, the, the most similar state that I would say I've seen this kind of model in is probably Illinois. And um, I think North Carolina also um, has made similar investments like this as well. Um, so, <laughs> So yeah, that's what I would say about that. On the question of, can you give examples of other local stakeholders? What does that really mean? What type of organizations are these? Um, this is really broad because uh, there, there's a, <clears throat> it's kind of a Venn diagram or a couple of Venn diagrams of organizations that identify as digital inclusion organizations and organizations that like do digital inclusion work. And I think that organizations that identify with them have just been very uh, quick to understand their role and and how they actually help their community members, but I think there are a whole host of other organizations within your local communities um, that don't necessarily think of themselves as supporting digital inclusion. For example, um, uh, working with uh, organizations that uh, like shelters or supportive housing organizations that don't traditionally look at themselves as hey. I'm a digital inclusion organization, but um, the work that they do to connect their residents with broadband to be able to apply to jobs or to be able to um, refresh government um, their their government benefits online that that counts right like that's that's an expansion of what we traditionally think of as digital inclusion, but um, those folks definitely count. To reinforce Noah's point, there are a wide range of digital inclusion stakeholders and communities. It sometimes is someone running a digital inclusion program out of a out of a housing authority or you know another social service agency. Um, they you know it could look like um, people who do a refurbishing uh, pro uh, project or program for computers or devices. It, it, like there's a broad range of stakeholders that are um, included in the in in this in the digital as who we count as digital inclusion stakeholders. I think the better the the not better, but the more like a uh, robust question is kind of like who isn't included in this, which I think would be a lot harder for me to answer. So I'm just I, I'll just leave that out there. Christine, to answer your question, will this recording be available soon? I'm going to get this to people as soon as possible. I think by the end of this week, I'll have sent out a message to, um, with this recording in it. And it'll be posted on the webpage that we shared, the Digital Inclusion NYDI Fund on NDIA's website. Any other questions I'm missing, Chrissy? Right, right. Yeah, it'll be available on to next Tuesday on the 31st, not, not due. Absolutely. Did we get them all? I think we did. So any other questions, again, feel free to email us at nydifund at digitalinclusion.org. Um, yeah, so thank you all for coming. I'm going to invite, or I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I wanna make sure I give everyone one last chance to um, ask a question, but also in the meantime, I want um, anyone here who is not a member of the NDIA community to join us. I'm gonna pop a link in the chat um, you can join us as an affiliate or friend for free. And once again, you get lots of great information on our listserv. Um, and then I wanna remind everyone to register for this Friday's webinar where we'll talk about the innovation grants. That's at 2 p.m. And we hope many of you will join us for that um, conversation as well. Thank you all. For Thank you all so much. Here. Yeah. Yes.
Pop-Tart. <laughs>